Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Super Shadow. Today we are going to be reacting to another video that you guys have sent in. Those of you who support me on Patreon and support me through Twitch. If you guys want to be a part of the community and pick out what videos we react to at least once a week, you can go ahead and find those links down in the description below. Now, as we're doing our content Christian creator uh, CCC uh, reactions here. We already had done Alan Parr, but some of you guys had sent me another Alan Parr video. Now, I haven't gotten around to seeing this video because I've just had a lot going on. But speaking of which, this video that you guys sent me was called An Honest Talk About the Future of This YouTube Channel. Now, historically, the culture of YouTube is people kind of make a big dramatic title like that video when really it's like, hey, uh, nothing really is changing or there's not a lot like all they, they create all this big, intense stuff just to say like, hey, we're still here and we're going to provide and we're going to do more videos. Now, I don't know if that's what Alan's doing here. Now, for context, I actually really like Alan Parr. I like a lot of what he has to say. I know some of you in the comment section thinks that, something else, but I really do. I like his stuff. We probably agree on like 90% of things, which is awesome. He's a great resource, especially if you're a new believer. If you have no idea who he is, but you somehow stumbled on my channel, I'll make sure to link his down in the description below. Go and check him out. You will be blessed by it. He probably has a video answering whatever it is that you have. But also while you're perusing, check out some of the other stuff we have here. We've got some awesome videos here, but let's jump into this video and react to what's going on with Alan because I think it's a little bit more. So let's see. Here we go. <sighs> um, guys, this is a video that, if I'm being completely uh, honest with you, is not a video that I ever really wanted to make and planned on making uh, because it's going to require me to be very vulnerable, transparent, and real with you all as I uh, discuss candidly kind of the future of this YouTube channel and just honestly where I'm at right now uh, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, um, as it relates to YouTube. So, um, I got some notes over here. So if you see me looking over here, I just want to capture all my thoughts in this video. Um, a couple of months ago, I'd say about a month ago, uh, hang on, before we go any further, guys, let me know if you haven't seen this video yet and you're seeing this for the first time with me, let me know down in the comment section below what you think is going on here. I don't think he's going to It's, it's almost seeming like he's saying like, Hey, I'm kind of burnt out. I'm done. He just crossed a million subscribers. For those of you who do not know or don't have the context of who Alan Parr is, he's a Christian content creator. He's made a ton of videos, just crossed a million not too long ago. Uh, really solid, like I said, Bible teacher. Uh, really good on citing his sources, especially when it comes to scriptural beliefs. So all around, like I said, I, I enjoy his content for the most part. But let's see what's going on in his life. Guys, burnout is a real thing, especially in the content creation space. Um, I had this great... Um milestone, if you will, where I passed over a million subscribers on this channel and everybody was singing my praises and everybody was sending me congratulatory messages and, and all of that. And what, um, what should have been a really, really exciting time of celebration, uh, as we look at that milestone, um, it was experienced with mixed emotions. If I'm just being completely mm. honest with you all, because, um, unfortunately, um, what I started doing is I looked at the number of subscribers that I had amassed, you know, a million people clicked that button and said they want to subscribe. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of people. But then I allowed negativity and discouragement to kind of creep in mm. because I started looking at my views on a lot of the videos that I was putting out at that time. And Dude, that was a pretty good video, by the, the way. You guys didn't see it, go um, check it out. The difference, uh, the discrepancy, if you will, between the number of people who were watching the videos and the number of people who subscribed, I allowed the enemy to just get to me, to just get to me. It was like, mm. man, are my people not interested in my videos? Like how come, you know, the majority, like 80, 90% of the people who subscribed are not interested in the content, right? I get it, right? That was just me letting the enemy get to me. This was why I don't want to, didn't want to make this video. Some of you are going to judge me, but I'm just being honest with you and transparent. So. Um, let me just kind of give you some um, uh, some context for where I'm going with this. Uh All right, let's stop right there. So, yeah, he's saying that when he hit a million subscribers, it was met with a lot of mixed emotions. Now, I've just seen from other Christian YouTubers or just YouTubers in general, people who are huge, who have exploded in these other big ways, reach these milestones. And, and for a lot of us, we think, wow, to amass a million subscribers on a platform, especially if you do it in a way that's God honoring and in a way that you feel 
has given you peace in the way that God's calling you to create content, a God honoring way. Like, why wouldn't you be jumping off rooftops and shouting from the rooftops? Like to a lot of people, you've arrived. But what we keep hearing and seeing from people's testimonies like this, as well as with someone like Ryan Trahan, who we did another video on and his interview about how really he became a Christian by reaching some of these milestones and seeing how empty and void they were, that you spend so long chasing after these things and you put your identity and your worth so much in reaching it, and then these things don't actually satisfy the way they're supposed to. In fact, it's sounding like from Alan's perspective, it almost was a double-edged sword where yes, he could celebrate this huge milestone, but also it was used in a negative way to impact him and his identity. And I think that's what he's going to unpack here a little bit here. It's a good reminder for you and me that we shouldn't put our faith and our trust in a metric or in a resource. I learned that well on the Twitch side, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's continue to let Alan share a little bit of what he has to say. About eight years ago, uh, I started this ministry and I really just wanted to teach the Bible. I wanted to help people understand, you know, truth from error, uh, to be able to discern. Um, I wanted to be able to um help people understand how to study the Bible for themselves and have sound theology. And uh, thankfully, I believe that we've been able to accomplish that for the most part. Hmm. But as of late, if I'm just being honest, like I, I've been discouraged because what I've seen is a shift in the type of content that is being consumed on YouTube, that's being created on YouTube, and um, the type of content that, if I'm being honest, most of my subscribers are more interested in. And it seems like we're living in a world where more Christians are interested in when I put out a video on, I don't know, Beyonce's new album, the video blows up, right? 800,000 views. But when I put out a video on like the seven last teachings of Jesus, which we worked really hard on, or um, other videos um, about, you know, how to study the Bible or, you know, I don't know how to overcome fear or shame or doubt in your life or whatever, using the word of God. It's like, I don't know. It just seems like the majority of Christians, or at least a lot of my subscribers, just not interested in that content. And, and that really broke my heart. uh, If I'm being honest, because I'm like, man, this is okay. I could do a video on Beyonce, but like, is that really what you need in terms of your spiritual growth? Oh man. Is that commentary on her? I'm going to help you be a better husband to be a better father to be a better christian let's stop right there it's interesting that he he says that because yes i think with with you two for those of you who do it and understand we know that like the algorithm really pushes out what it thinks most people want to see and also at the same time it'll push out a video like the 10 last teachings of jesus and if people don't click on it right away if they don't stop to like look at the thumbnail and kind of watch the first few seconds of the preview then it kind of gets a ding negatively to show it to less people because less people are interested in it. So in a way, yes, it is speaking to both the algorithm, but also to the people who want to watch it. And yeah, talking about Beyonce is a lot more culturally of a wider net that'll grab more people's attention than uh, say a Christian who really wants to understand, should I smoke weed or not? Right? Like that's a good question. But only mature Christians are really asking that one. So, yeah, so you're kind of niching down a bit. Whereas Beyonce and is Beyonce satanic, let alone that just casts such a wide net to both uh, Christians who want to be careful what they're listening to. You then add in Beyonce fans who just want to defend her. You then add in those who are uh, discernment or, you know, believe in like Illuminati and conspiracies and all that. And so you have a wide, way wider net than any of the other ones. So I could see how, yeah, that could feel discouraging, especially when you go back to what YouTube was a few years ago, when more people, it was being used more as a search engine to answer very specific questions, where people wanted to go to YouTube to specifically find out, can Christians smoke weed or whatever it may be. And so I get that and I understand the struggle that that can have and the feel of like, man, is this what people really want nowadays? Oh man, poor Alan, feel for him here. Let's keep seeing what else he has to say though. Maybe in some ways, yes, but, you know, when I look at that content as compared to like giving you solid biblical principles for how to live the Christian life, it's no question. I think that this content over here is more valuable, but it, it didn't seem like many of my subscribers were really uh, more interested in that. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. I think there's a way though, and maybe he's going to speak to this and uh, maybe that's part of what he's going to get to his big conclusion here. 
he's building to is I think there's a way though to take what all of those people want to see, right? Let's take the Beyonce thing. And I think he, I didn't watch that video. I'm not a huge Beyonce fan, not a big conspiracy theorist, Illuminati person. And so to me, wasn't super interested in that one particularly. I'm more interested in probably those lesser videos that he's referring to. I'm one of those 14,000 that watched that first uh, Jesus, uh, 10 lessons of Jesus before, before he went to the cross. Um, and so to me, I think the strategy there is how do I play to that algorithm and also play to those people to where, yeah, I'm going to open up with Beyonce, but Beyonce, but I'm going to grow that from, yeah, that's going to be the starting point, the common ground that we meet on. I'm meeting you in your interests, but then I'm going to expand that to say, here's why you shouldn't just care about Beyonce in this way. For an Alan Parr fan, here's why you shouldn't just listen to what Alan Parr has to say, but actually go back and look at this, or let me give you this counter argument of what I think over here. And that way we can kind of grow that and be able to reach the same people, but give them what they really need. And so I just threw Alan's name out there for my example of how I'm using him as the common ground to connect with you who maybe wouldn't see this video otherwise, but you clicked on it because Alan Parr was in it. Right. So, um, so, Essentially, uh, as I saw this shift happen, I started to see a slight decline on my channel. And let me go back, all right? So whenever I started in 2015, I could put out a video like, should Christians drink alcohol? Or should Christians take vacations together if you're single? Or hey, no. do, should Christians believe in the rapture? Or an overview of the book of John or whatever it is. And people were interested in that, right? But as the content shifted, as things kind of changed, it seems to be that nowadays, um, what's more appealing is pop culture, celebrity culture, whether that's, you know, Christian celebrities or non-Christian celebrities. And it's really about whose picture we can put on the thumbnail and put it in the title. So Carl Lentz, you know, fails from Hillsong Church, New York. Yeah, and those everybody types wants of things to see that always it's drama, grab. right? Literally, if you guys look at my last video just before this one hit over 2,000 when my average uh, video does like a couple hundred views, easily 2,000 on Carl Lentz, exactly what he was talking about. My highest grossing video has like 24K right now. Another Dante Bowen leaving Maverick City. Those types of videos always tend to do super well. But again, like what he's speaking to, does it enrich the viewer? Does it give value to you in some way? Or is it just feeding into drama? Now, I try to make sure our videos always give some type of value to you guys, just like I think Alan does here. And so hopefully that's the case. And that's always what we want to aim for. It's never just to add fuel to a fire, to add more drama or gossip. That's never, ever the point. And it's like, that seems to be what more people are interested in. Is that all right? I don't want to make the video all about that because let me just say this I've got a lot of friends on YouTube whom I love dearly and I respect dearly, and they make a lot of that content, and I and I love them for that. And I think there's significant value in that type of content. I've done that type of content on my channel, so please don't see this as me saying that content is not valuable. It there's so much value in getting a Christian biblical worldview to the things that are going on in this world, right? And bringing a Christian perspective to that, um, you know, but. That's just not what this channel is ever going to be about, is just doing that type of content. And so I started thinking, man, you know, do I need to shift my focus? Do I need to shift the type of content that I do so that I can remain relevant on, on YouTube, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, I was left with this decision. And I'll get back to that in just a moment, all right? So I, I want to I talk to you guys about the future of this channel, which is really the point of this video okay, and where I'm we going go. with this. And, and um, you know, I've been on video, I've been on YouTube for about eight years now. And uh, for the past five and a half years, guys, I have been cranking out two videos a week, not just simple Grinding. videos where I'm sitting behind my desk talking like high quality, high edited, <laughs> highly produced videos a week. And um, I need to take a step back. I need to take a step no. back from that. And this is what it's going to look like and why. And my prayer is, I, my biggest prayer, is if you're a Christian YouTuber or you're just an influencer in general, that you would really take heed and listen to the words that I'm getting ready to say. Because I... Oh, man. Yeah, I want to hear what he has to say specifically to Christian content creators or influencers or creators in general. But no, did he really just say he's taking a step back? It, it can't be permanent, right? This has to be a 
hey, I'm taking a step back for a few months. I'm going to remove myself from the scene, which totally understandable. And I think it's something we need to do regularly that God created the Sabbath for a reason. The God who is all powerful, all knowing. One of the first things we get to learn and read about in the very opening chapters of Genesis is that he creates all of creation that we enjoy and see. And then he actually rests on the seventh day. Now, why would a Almighty Creator God do that because He was establishing for us the need for a Sabbath, the need to, yes, create. We are made in the image of a Creator, so we create as much as we can. But after we create, to be intentional about taking rest. And that rest isn't just sleeping and being lazy. Real Sabbath, real rest is resting in God. And if we're not doing that, and that might be one of the big things Alan is going to be pointing to next, is that if we're just creating, 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 but we're not honoring God, Outside of that, we can lose focus pretty easily. We can lose our purpose really easily. But let's hear. I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Hopefully, you guys are too. But let's dive into what he has to say directly to us, the Christian content creators or influencers or people who just enjoy viewing Christian content. There's something in here probably for all of us. I know that I'm not the only one feeling this way. I know that there are other influencers who are going at the pace that I've been going at for the last five, six years and it's not a healthy pace. And so I am making the decision to take a step back from YouTube, and I'll share with you in a moment what that's gonna look like. Mm. But here are my four reasons for why I'm doing this. Uh, First and foremost, um, mentally, right? Mentally, What what I realized was that I was allowing my part of my identity to be wrapped up in YouTube. Yeah. I, I was, That's you know, real. whenever I put out a video and it blew up and it went viral, I'd feel good about myself. Oh man, people like my content. I'm feeling good. But then when I put out another video that maybe didn't perform so well, I found myself kind of down. So my YouTube journey, pretty much any month was be up and down, up and down emotionally, right? Based on how I thought the videos were performing. And so Oh man, I could speak to that directly when it comes to, so while we are relatively still new on YouTube, less than a year at this point, uh, for a long time, for those of you who've watched the channel before, uh, we are on Twitch for a very long time doing live streams. Now, the difference is my live streams wouldn't stay up. They'd stay up, but nobody, the culture on Twitch isn't to go back and watch a VOD um, on there. They're way too long. They're usually three, four, five hours. Um, So really the way you kind of engage your community is how many people show up live and then how many subscribers you have. Now subscribers on Twitch are different than subscribers on YouTube. Twitch just calls them followers, equivalent subscribers there. But really it's more of those who are part of like members uh, using YouTube terms. And so subscribers are people who are paying money, $4.99 a month to be subscribed to. And I remember I'd be grinding and grinding, sometimes seven, eight, nine hours, 10 hours a day multiple days in the week to try to get my sub count to a place where it made sense that I was spending so much time investing so much time, especially early in my marriage, uh, into this when I could have been investing more into my wife. Um, you know, it was usually during her work hours or it may be. And my identity got so caught up that first year in my sub count. Uh, and just like you're saying, when it was high, when it was in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 100, even it broke, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. I'm going to I'm actually making money. This is awesome. But then if I'd go on vacation or I'd take a day off or I wouldn't get to stream for whatever reason, and I would see those numbers drop off because people wouldn't auto renew, they were gifted subs, whatever they may be. Um, Yeah, my value and my worth felt hurt to the point where I took a break for quite some time uh, that first year and then even have taken breaks regularly just to refocus because I have to remember, we have to remember our identity is not found in a metric. It's found in our maker what I started to do was I started to believe the lie from the enemy that the YouTube algorithm determines whether a video that I put out is good or bad. Mm. So the way it works, guys, is if I put out a video on YouTube and let's just say 95% of the people don't watch it and only 5% of the people click on the video, the video could be great. And I know that because I look at your comments, you're like, oh, brother Alan, this video really helped me. But YouTube doesn't think it is. So YouTube is going to look at the fact that only 5% of the people look at the video and they're going to be like, you know what? We're not going to keep pushing this video to more of Alan's subscribers. We're going to shut it down and we're not going to push it out. And as a result, that video doesn't perform as well because 
of the algorithm. And I allowed myself to, I don't know, to, to feel like um, the algorithm determined my worth. Yeah, right. That's like real. if the algorithm likes my videos, then uh, it must be a good video. But if the algorithm doesn't like my videos, then it must not be a good video. So I I'm taking a step back because mentally I had to reshape my identity. I had to reform good. my identity and realize that, you know what, my identity as a human being and as a Christian is not going to be reliant upon whether YouTube thinks my videos are good or not. Amen. And that takes maturity, guys. Understand that this is his main source of income. Imagine stepping away from your job. Now, scripturally, yes, we are as husbands, as heads of the house, we are meant to, Christ calls us to provide and care for our family. Scriptures tell us that one who does not care for them is worse than a non-believer in that way. And so financially, yes, we need to be responsible and take care of our families. But just as much, it takes so much faith and maturity on Alan's part to go, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you with this. I'm going to give this to you. I'm putting too much of my identity into this. And so, God, I need to trust you with this. And for so many of us, I think we, we make excuses and we believe that our purpose in life or that we're made to work and just to provide. No, we're made to glorify and honor God first and foremost. And that comes by knowing him, by being with him. And if we find ourselves in too deep in our job because we just keep thinking that our identity is just in being a provider, that's a, a calling for our lives for a season is to provide in this way. But God also calls us above that to be reminded of our purpose, and that is to be made in his image, to know him and make him known to the world, like my camp always used to say. And so, guys, this is so important. Please hear this. I've had to take a step away from Twitch when my daughters were born. That's why I came over to YouTube because it's just easier for me to make content when I have this available time instead of streaming eight to 10 hours a day. That's unrealistic. That would cost me, that would be sacrificing aspects of my marriage. That'd be sacrificing the, the moments and times that I get to have with my daughter. And so YouTube is just an evergreen platform for me to be able to make content and still connect with my audience and with those who enjoy watching and my friends that I still get to connect with in the content space. And so absolutely, please hear this from Alan. It is so important. If you guys want to go and check out the rest of the video, you can hear, um, but I want to see where he ends up going in this. I think uh, Alan is really wise in this, but let's see how he finishes this off. Or even whether you all think my videos are good or not. So I had to take a step back and uh, yeah, it's all about that audience myself one. from a mental perspective. The second reason why I'm taking a step back, guys, is because of ministry reasons. Listen, um, and I hope and pray as a Christian YouTuber, you hear my heart on this. God has given me a big vision for my ministry. For those of you who don't know, I do have a, a nonprofit ministry outside of YouTube. Thank the Lord. It's called Let's Equip. It's a nonprofit organization. We create courses, coaching, curriculum, and uh, our community, uh, and, and all sorts of things. And God has given me a big vision for this. But what has happened, guys, is that I've been so focused because my, my, my identity has been wrapped up in wanting to to put, crank out content on YouTube that I have neglected the vision for this ministry and have not been able to focus my time on building up more courses and building up a curriculum and building up an academy and building up the things that God has called me to do because I don't have the time. I've been so focused on cranking out two videos a week, high quality videos. And so if I ever want to really, really fulfill the calling that God has on my life outside of YouTube, I need to take a step back. All right. And not only that, um, not only that, I've pushed my team so hard over the past few years uh, because we're going at an unhealthy pace, cranking out so much content that my team has started to get burned out. And God forbid I lose one of my team members who are very near and dear to me and they work really, really hard and they're excellent at what they do because I'm pushing them so hard and burning them out. But guys, the third reason is the one that gets me the most, um, the reason why I need to take a step back. Um, and that's not, not just for mentally and for ministry, but for my family, for my family. Um, this is the big one, guys, that, um, and I hope and pray every influencer hears my heart on this. Um, at times, guys, I have neglected my responsibilities 
as a husband, as mm. a father, as a son, mm. to my Keep aging family. parents, and just as a family man, because I've been going at such an unhealthy pace. There's been times that I've missed dinners um, because I'm up late at night editing videos, um, cranking out content, preparing to speak, traveling all over the country at conferences and different things like that. And as a result, you know, I have missed time with my family. I've missed time with mm. my wife. I've missed time with my kids. And um, uh, all the while, I'll be honest with you, my marriage has suffered in some regards to that. Um, Jennifer and I are fine. Okay, we're solid. But but we don't want to just be solid. We want to be better than that. And, you know, I know you probably don't want to hear that, that my marriage has suffered because I've been putting too much time. And I, I'll be honest, I think many people who are on YouTube, it's probably the same for you, if you're being honest. And this is the one that got me, guys. Um, mm. I'm going to try not to get emotional here, but... Um, like a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I was with my daughter and, and she just said something like, um, you know, she wanted to spend more time with me that she misses her daddy. Mm. And, and she's, and I said, well, you know, daddy's always here. Daddy's here. And she said, um, no, cause you're always upstairs, you know, working on your YouTube videos and recording videos. And I just want to spend time with you. And, and I heard that guys in my heart just, oh man, it just broke, it just broke, mm. man. It just broke me down that 15, 20, 30 years from now, when I think about what my, my little daughter and my son is, is going to, you know, yeah, remember me as, and, and what's going to be more valuable is not that I cranked out more videos on YouTube. Mm. It's going to be that they knew that their daddy was there. Yeah. Their daddy was there. I remember. Oh man. Coming from a, a, a new dad. I've only been a dad for about uh, 18 months now, a little bit less. And, oh, I was just reading a book been been flying through some books right now and just finished reading a book uh talking about habits it's from a uh, life church pastor greg rochelle he, he called the power to change and he talks about in there one of the things that he decided when it came to family very similar situation wasn't making youtube content but flying around speaking doing all these things is that one way one small way that he decided uh, that he was going to change a habit of of showing his kids that he was investing in them caring for them is that he was never going to uh, say no to spending time with them. Um, that he would drop whatever it was that he was doing as long as it wasn't like a, a prior commitment, like he wasn't going to drop a wedding, you know, officiating a wedding to sit with his kid. But anything outside of that, if they wanted to hang out, he would say yes to hanging out if it was during his free time. And he would hang out for as long as they wanted to be together. And I just thought that was so beautiful. My daughter is only, um, like I said, about 17 months at this point. And so uh, she always wants to hang out, and so I'm always with her. And so, yeah, I I get the grind, the YouTube grind of late nights. That's why we're here in the basement, uh, creating this and and editing late at night, and you know, doing what you got to do on the YouTube side of things to make it happen and work. But there has to be that balance. And I totally get what he's saying when it comes to your marriage. Things could be good. Things in my marriage are good, but they could always be better, right? Why settle for good when you can have great? And so, uh, you know, as a husband, the calling on us, according to what the scriptures tell us, is that we are called to love our, our wives like Christ loved the church, which is such a huge calling. It's a huge honor that is bestowed on us as husbands to try to mimic that in the best way we see possible. And when we see that, we see Christ was self-sacrificial. He wasn't uh, motivated by greed or selfish ambition. What motivated him was love. And so to move in that direction and to say, how can I be more loving? How can I be more kind? How can I be more gentle to my spouse? Absolutely. I think, I think while yes, we always need to make sacrifices in life, I think sleep could be one, you know, depending on your health. I wouldn't say do it all the time, but, um, you know, there are certain things we can sacrifice, money if we have to, but your marriage and your kids should never be one of them. So I think, again, Alan's making a really good choice and call here when it comes to putting them first. Your family will always be your first ministry, and that goes to pastors, that goes to content creators, that goes to you who work in the office. Your family is always your first and most important ministry that God has bestowed on you. And so I want you to hear that, and hopefully you see that. And that doesn't discourage or shouldn't discourage you or give you an excuse to not volunteer in a local church, to not be involved, because I think there's ways. Thanks, Siri. But I think there's ways in which your family can be blessed by. But I think there are ways your family can be blessed 
by serving in the church and them seeing that and being a part of that. I think there's a huge blessing there. But let's see how he ends this video. I remember a couple of years ago, my wife, we were having a conversation and she said to me, um, she said to me, you're so busy ministering to all these other people across the world whom you don't even know. And you're not even ministering to your own wife mm. in terms of like praying together, fasting together, uh, worshiping together, doing devotionals together as a couple, as a family. And guys, that just broke me down. So I, I need to take a step back and I need to be the man of God, the husband, the father that I'm called to be because my family is my main ministry. Yep. All right. I got through that totally point agree. without, without crying. All right. So that, that was tough. Um, um, okay. The fourth reason is personally guys, uh, you know, over the past several years, I have had minimal time to focus on myself, to do the things that I love to do, um, play golf, um, play racquetball, play chess, uh, exercise, take care of myself, um, relax, <laughs> get a massage every so often, like just enjoy life, relax and rest. And I have been neglecting myself because, um, you know, I have been editing videos and uh, cranking out content. So what does this look like for the future of this channel? Guys, uh, for the foreseeable future, starting next week, I'm going to be going down to one video a week. All right. One video a week. And if let me just be honest with you. Can I be honest? I've wanted sure, yeah. to do this for a really, really long time, but I've allowed, excuse me, I've allowed fear to keep me from doing this because um, I've, I was afraid that if I, if I only put out one video a week, that my channel would suffer. Yeah. I mean, you're cutting yourself down. So it sounds like he's not leaving and taking a full step back and break from doing YouTube for a while. Instead, he's just cutting down the amount of work that he's doing from putting out two videos a week down to one, which I don't think is a bad thing. You look at some other big content creators and not that we want to model necessarily everything that they do on YouTube. But if you look at like a Mr. Beast, if you look at an Arak, right? Like the videos that are doing super, super well in terms of performance on YouTube, are ones where it's really polished, it's really well done, it's very entertaining, has crafting of really well done storytelling and all these things, but they're not coming out every single day. They're coming out once, maybe a week, every two weeks. Sometimes, I mean, Mr. Beast is doing like once a month, but they're these big, huge, extravagant videos. And so I think, yeah, the scary part, the hesitation, I can totally understand. You're having less, you know, half the visibility, half the income, you know, that you were going to be getting from putting out two videos a week that equals to half the income you get in a month from that specifically. So yeah, I can, I can totally see, especially when you're like, okay, well, he's got a million subscribers. He's, you know, being called to speak at an engagement. So he's probably doing really well. Yes. But you also forget he's paying a team of people. So it's not just providing for his family that his content has to do, but he has to make sure he's bringing enough through his content to be able to provide for those under him who, you know, maybe moved uh, when what do you mean asked me to move out to be his editor you know it, i would have to totally be reliant on him staying motivated to do videos him coming up with the direction for the channel all of these things and so with alan i would expect the same thing unless these guys are just doing this part-time or you know on the side and they already lived in the area these people are relying on him to keep providing content that you want to watch and see on there well man guys well there you go. We got to hear from Alan himself. He's not leaving YouTube. And as he stated, there's a few different reasons there, both the spiritual aspect, keeping his focus, the, the, the being able to do more ministry stuff, his other ways that God has called him and wants to use his skill set to be able to teach people, maybe even help train up some new pastors in this way. Uh, he's talked about his family. Totally get it. Your family always comes first. And lastly, he talked about personally just being able to have time to work on himself. Now, if you didn't know, he lost a ton of weight. He's looking good. So I would think that like that's played a part in it. But maybe he's talking just more about like leisure, being able to enjoy or maybe it's even getting back to that. Um, whatever it may be, I would just love to let Alan Parr know that his ministry has been a blessing while again, we haven't connected a ton in the online space, mainly because when he was starting on YouTube, I was over on Twitch. But now that we're sharing this platform, I've learned a lot just by 
watching his videos, <laughs> almost any topic that we've covered on Pastors After Dark, I feel like he's had videos on that could be good starting points for me just to see how other people have thought about this topic as well and giving me good references to go, okay, he, these are good starting points for the scriptures. What can I bring to it? What can I add to it? And so I'm um, not sure if he'll ever see this video. If you guys want to help me try to get this to reach him, I want him to know that Man, I'm sure like many of you guys, his ministry has just blessed me. I'm going to continue to support his channel and support him any way that I can here on my channel with my resources. Um, and so I encourage you guys to do the same. I'm not going to even ask for any other action in this video than to go check out Alan Park. Check out some of those videos that he's talking about that people haven't clicked on as much. And I guarantee you, especially the spontaneous worship one, it's, it looks like it's a long video. I put it on and listened to it while I was driving somewhere. And guys, let me just tell you, it was a blessing that day. I still remember this day, the car ride I was taking and driving and just lifting up my spirits and helping me find some new song worship music that I hadn't even heard of or knew about before. And so don't want to spoil the ones that are in there and tell you guys what they are, but you would be blessed to go and check out Alan Parr, the Beats channel. Um, I know he's blessed me these last few years. And so Alan, thank you and God bless you in whatever God has next for you.